What is a frame? Okay, at a most basic level, you can compare it to a house or a building with multiple windows. Okay, through each window frame, what do you see? Something different, depending on the size of the frame, depending on where it's located. And this analogy, this metaphor, applies to how we experience the world. And you must train yourself to identify the frames within you, but also within others. And this will determine a lot of your success when it comes to socializing, networking, you name it. Okay, so at a most basic level, you could say that the frame through which we experience and see the world are our five senses, right? We don't see reality as it is, no one does. You see it through touch, smell, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The way you see the world around you is also through a certain frame, dictated by how you've been conditioned. Okay, you can also think of this as um, different glasses that you have on, and there's a different color lens. And that lens is imposed on you from the moment you're born and keeps being tweaked throughout your life. So let's take the example of someone who's born, come into this world, here's the glasses, there's some basic beliefs on those glasses. Okay, the beliefs are, you're not good enough, <laughs> seek approval, always try to complete yourself. But then it gets more nuanced. You might be in school and someone might tell you you're stupid, you're dumb, right? You're in class and maybe a classmate's like, you're stupid. Or the teacher might say something like, what is that question? No. And you might believe it. If you believe that idea, what is it gonna do to the glasses, to the lenses? It's going to change it. And suddenly you're gonna be filtering the world everything that happens to you, everything you see, everything that you do through this lens of, I am stupid. And the ripple effect it will have on your life is insane. Okay, uh, another example could be, I like this one, going to a movie. You know, say you go see John Wick 4 that's not out yet. And say you're a big John Wick fan, okay. John Wick 4 comes out, you've been looking forward to it for years, you're so excited, you're like, fuck yeah, John Wick, here we go. You go to the movie theater, on your way in, you see someone walking out who might have seen a previous screening of it, and they're talking to their friend, and they say, ugh, that movie really sucked. They lost it with number four, you know? It was good up until three, but man, this one just wasn't all that. What's that going to do? It plants that seed, changes the lens, and now your experience of that movie is gonna change completely. Now you're gonna be filtering the movie through, ah, this movie is shit. You're gonna be looking at it like, oh, I guess that special effect there was not all that. Ah, oh, yeah, he's a little slower in this one. He's getting old. They really did lose it. And that'll be your experience. On the flip side, what could happen? Say you walk in and that same person walks out and you hear them say, that was the best John Wick ever. The seed is planted and your experience of that movie and what you see in that movie, your RAS, your selective focus changes because of that. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. Okay, and we have this in our life. Once more, going back to that, I am stupid. If you believe that, then let's just say you try to jump at an opportunity and you fail, or you get rejected. Instead of maybe viewing that objectively like, ah, oh, it's a, you know, trial and error, you might link it to, I'm stupid, and reinforce the belief that you are stupid. And that keeps reinforcing that lens which then causes you to filter the next experience through that and the next experience through that to the point where you're just entrenched in this. So understanding this, this is some of the foundations, realize that you have those glasses on right now. What you see around you, how you interpret the world, isn't how it is, it's how you've been conditioned and it is very key to identify the different beliefs that are affecting that lens, okay? and not just in you, but also in others. This is part of social intelligence. Learning how to understand your own frames, learning the frames of others, learning how to communicate in a way that connects with them, and also learning how to reframe things. Okay, so whenever something's happening to you, there's always a certain frame. Right now you're experiencing this event through a certain frame. When people go through adversity, there's a typical frame that they take on, which is, why is this happening to me, right? Reframe it, what's a good reframe? If you follow my Instagram, you should know this one. Nope. 
what can I get out of it? Yes. What is this teaching me? This is in terms of reframing your own self-talk. Catch every frame, how you interpret things. If you take a day-to-day -day basis, look at all the things that are happening to you and like, hmm, through which frame am I experiencing this? Why is this happening to me? Reinforces victim mentality. It reinforces you're helpless. It reinforces the world is out to get you. The world is a scary place. This is bad. And your experience of whatever you're going through is gonna be quite horrible. But if you just change it, you catch it like, wait a minute, let's take that pair of glasses off. Let's put, what is this teaching me? Why is this good for me? Suddenly everything changes. Your experience of it changes as well. Okay. Now, when going out and socializing, you can identify the frames, you can play into them, you can also tweak them, and you can also have different frame battles. Okay. And this is key. Every time you're talking to someone, there's going to be some kind of frame battle. Don't think of it as something bad or like a competition, but you're both trying to connect on some level where it makes sense. And these frames are up for grabs. So whenever I'm talking to someone, I will never, ever buy into, acknowledge, or reinforce a frame that is not helping me. Another thing that's key when it comes to frames, and this really helps in terms of calibration, is that you gotta catch your RAS, okay? Catch your default state, catch your RAS. What do you focus on most of the time? Okay, your RAS is your selective focus. You walk into a new environment, what are you zoning in on? What's the theme of what you're zoning in on? Is it fear? If you walk into a new environment, are you scanning for threats? Is it that fear of being judged? What are people thinking of me? Ooh, what are they gonna say? What if I stand out? What if I do the wrong thing? Is it anger, frustration? Ooh, you know, the AC is a little bit cold in here. Ah, that's annoying. Ah, you know, maybe, maybe these lights are, they're, they're not bright enough for me to see Julie and that's also a little bit annoying. Is that your RIS? Catch it. Because until you do, you're gonna be projecting that onto people and you will not be able to calibrate and connect with them. If you're someone who's in a state of fear and you look at someone and you're analyzing all the threats, you're like, this person is scary. You're calibrating to what? The scary thing you put on them, not who they actually are. This is Julian and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level, okay? Be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally, produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.